That was good. Yeah, let's see your time. Uh, 6.44. Great. Heart and rate. Heart rate? 177 to 181. And what's your guess on lactate? Probably 4.3 or 4.4. Okay, and how'd you feel skiing? It's fun. <laughs> Controlled still? Controlled. Great, great, good work. <laughs> All right. Well, damn. <laughs> so we saw where that we saw where that that separation is, right? Yeah. All right. Good job today. Oh. Good morning. Welcome to June. So for this month, after last month's kind of introduction to training again, kind of increasing a little bit of the specific training in our baseline, a little bit of an introduction to maybe some uh, single sticking, double pulling, technical aspects of our training. We're moving into a period of time where we really want to set a, a marker for improvement. And so to do that, we do a number of different tests. Now these can be time trials, lactate profiles, VO2 max tests. There's any numerous ways to set yourself with some benchmarks to work from. And so from our testing, what we like to look at specifically are time trials and our pacing, as well as lactate uh, production and our speed at given lactate numbers. So we have different ways we do this. Sometimes we can do this um, on a track for instance and running and so we take our times and we take our lactates for different uh, speeds on the track and intensities and we look at heart rates that match that. Another way we do it is with field testing and so today I had Andrew come out and he did a very specific L3 session on a uh, repeatable course that we use a lot here in the Twin Cities for our workouts. It's a really great undulating terrain, challenging, yet he can be controlled and really dial in what we call his lactate threshold zone. And so why this is important is we're not looking to necessarily push to our max. What we're looking to do is to build a good amount of duration and comfort and efficiency in that lactate threshold zone. And so for Andrew today, we did a specific session where we wanted to really find where those parameters were in terms of time and effort and um, what that felt like for him when he's doing his session. And so we did a number of different uh, rounds for him on this course. And you can see that he started out really easy because we wanted to set that baseline. And then he slowly progressed and got a little bit faster. And then for his last interval, I really asked him to try to see where that breaking point was, to go a little bit harder and see if that really did make a difference. And so he dropped his time by only a little under 30 seconds, but his lactate shot up. And so that really tells us that there isn't a whole lot of wiggle room between where he should be in his L3 zone and where he really shouldn't be at this time of year for his L3 training in that L4 zone. We will get to that zone eventually, but right now we really wanna hone in on that specific lactate threshold training. So I encourage you to go out and to really set these parameters. And so the way you can do it is you think, your threshold zone is something that you can really sustain for about 60 minutes of work. And so that's our goal is eventually we're going to progress and we're going to be doing five to six times 10 minutes of this type of work. But this work shouldn't feel like it leaves you absolutely exhausted at the end. You should always feel like you have room to do at least one hard effort at the end. So that should give you a clue as to if you're doing it. If you have access to lactate testing, that's fantastic. There's different areas. Uh, throughout the Midwest that can provide this feedback for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out and contact me. Take care.